Uh, we've heard stories about how they've been ministering to prisoners in the Philippines. Right this past Christmas, I don't know if you know about this, but the, the group said, hey, let's, let's help some of these families living in poverty. And they connected with the church in Cavite City, and they know the pastor there. And so they, they pulled their resources together, like they did in the book of Acts, and they, they put their money together. And knowing that Christmas is a big deal in the Philippines, like Christmas is huge, Christmas Eve and Christmas. But some of these families are living in poverty. So they pulled together enough resources to put together 44 Christmas baskets for, for families in need. Not just little dinky handout bags, goodie bags, like baskets to bless the family. And so they sent, they, they, they sent the money over, they put these together, and uh, Pastor Roel, who they became friends with, went to deliver these baskets to families in the church, but also beyond the church. And here's what they assured me. They say, this is not just us handing us out the baskets, but Pastor Roa is making sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ is being delivered with you. This is not just good deeds so we feel good about giving people stuff. It's about extending the glory of Jesus so that people who are far from him would find him. And so one of the, the, the people who got one of these baskets was actually a cancer patient. This guy's name is Jojo, and uh, Pastor Roa is delivering it to Jojo, and uh, he, he was a Christian, part of a music group, but he had backslidden, like he had stopped walking with the Lord. And the report is when he received uh, this love and, and the grace of Christ through, through South Bay Community Church, that there is a revival in his heart. And this day, he's now walking with the Lord and he's holding Bible studies in his house. Another patient who suffering from cancer, was delivered this, this basket. She received it with open hands. But more importantly than receiving this basket with open hands, the report is she received Jesus with an open heart. She invited Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior into her heart. They gave her the basket, some additional money to help with medical expenses. But she has stepped into eternity. And so I, I, I love this, this mentality. How can we go beyond our walls? How can we go beyond our group and think about this world who needs Jesus? And so the volcano Ta'al erupted, as you saw in the video earlier. A few weeks ago, it erupted and has devastated lives. 271,000 people at least have been affected. affected. Thousands of people displaced from their homes. Livelihoods destroyed because it's not just about getting my home back. It's like my livelihood, my way of living. The, the farms are gone. The animals are gone. Right? This picture, I wish it was a black and white picture. It's not. It's a full color picture. And so once again, the life group's thinking, okay, so how do we love beyond ourselves? How do we love beyond these walls? What can we do to help these people? And they found out these people need water. They need, they, they need food, canned goods, clothing, hygiene products. And so... They came and asked the church. I know uh, one of the leaders uh, asked Pastor Gary, hey, can, can we send some money over? Pastor Gary had a great idea. He said, hey, you know, we could just cut a check. But why don't we involve the family? And so why don't we do this? This, this was just last week, the conversation. Like, why don't we do an emergency fundraiser? And this way we can bring awareness to the whole household, the whole family. Everybody can kind of see what's going on. And they have a chance to sew into this. Let's invite the church to get involved. And then whatever you raise from the fundraiser, then the church will match. So the church will still give, but let's make this a family project. And so that's why when you walked in, you smelled the adobo cooking and you saw the, the tables out there. That's our way to say, hey, how can we extend God's glory and his grace? So I pray you would consider, even if you're not hungry, even if you don't like Filipino food, <laughs> would you consider being part of this mission? Next week, the Mexico team will be out there. We're sending 12 people to, uh, to Mexico to build houses and hopefully bring the love of Christ and the message of Christ to those they're building houses for. But they're going to be doing a fundraiser too. And I pray you would consider being aware of what's going on in Mexico and being part of that. But here's my challenge to you. When you go and purchase something from that fundraiser, don't just swipe a card. Don't just cut a check or shell out cash. My challenge is when you do so, would you spiritually engage in the mission? 
realize something is going on, something so much bigger than us. There are people who are far from God. And so when you swipe that card or give that cash, pray and ask God, God, would you take the seed and would you birth salvation in a number of souls? Take the seed and grow it for your glory that people who are far from you would find Jesus. Let's engage. Because God, God's got a mission. He's going to fulfill it. Will he do it in spite of us or because of us? Besides Mexico and Philippines, by the way, Pastor Gary and I, we've been planning to go to Philippines already. We are thinking February or March. Uh, but now with the volcano expected to erupt again, we don't even know if we can fly in. Um, so that's pending. But our hope is to go and make connections and to get to know ministry so that we can come back with opportunities to launch more of you out to the Philippines. So there's Mexico, there's Philippines. We're still going to go to East Asia this year. We're going to go to Japan. Ken and Sherry Roberts are still doing their work in Uganda. I just met with a pastor from Argentina on Friday. It's a chance we're going to start sending teams to South America. And so there's opportunities. And I want to encourage every follower of Christ, every disciple of Christ, to ask yourself this, how will I engage in the mission this year? Like, how will I be a part of what God is doing? And I, I, I want to make it really clear that when we say engaging in the mission, that doesn't require you necessarily to cross an ocean. It doesn't necessarily require you to become a missionary. But it's asking the question, how can I be a part of what you're doing, God? Make me passionate for what you're doing. Give me a heart like yours that breaks for people that don't know you. 